All right, hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today our video is about triggers. Now, triggers are pretty simple to put together, but very powerful. And yet at the same time, it's almost always possible to make a case why you shouldn't use a trigger. And instead of using a trigger, use something like a validation rule, a workflow rule, or even the process builder. But there still are some scenarios where triggers are absolutely indispensable. And on top of that, triggers are something that usually administrators can write or learn to write without being a full-blown expert in Apex coding. It's sort of the Salesforce equivalent of a Visual Basic script within Excel. If you can learn how to do it, it adds a lot to the, the things that you can do within your Salesforce and the different manipulations you can do to data, to records, to workflows, uh, without being that complex of something to put together. So today I'm gonna to show you a really basic example of a trigger. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, so as always, our first step is just to go ahead and log in to Salesforce. And once we've logged in, we'll of course arrive at our configuration panel. And I could go ahead and in the quick find, I could put in triggers and I would see all the different options against all the different objects. I could click on opportunity, for example. I could create a new trigger directly from here and it would give me a little editor. But actually what I prefer to do is to use the developer console. So I'm gonna jump into the developer console and once it loads up, what I can actually do from inside the developer console is I can create a new trigger. So I'll go to new and I'll go to Apex Trigger. And all I really need to do now is I need to give it a name and I need to choose which S object this trigger runs against. So I'm gonna choose lead. Now, I'm gonna be setting a field value before a record gets inserted. So I'm gonna use before insert. By default, I have these options. So this could be before or after insert or before or after update. Uh, these are sort of the most common scenarios. There are others, but I'm gonna leave it as it is. So what I wanna do actually is if I'm going to have to query any data using SQL that's in my Salesforce org, I want to do that before I start manipulating any records because I'm actually going to create a loop and I never want to run a query inside of a loop. It's just very inefficient. So I'm going to actually create a query for business hours and I'm going to select ID from the business hour table where the name of the record is my business hours. So once I have this query ready, now I can start looping through the records that will be coming into the system. Now, of course, we should always remember that a trigger can have multiple records. So we always need to run it through a loop. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a basic for loop. And I'm gonna say for every lead that's in trigger.new. Now trigger.new actually is an object that holds all of those records before they're inserted. All of those new lead records that are created. So, I'm going to create two variables. I'm going to make one called now date, which is just equal to the date right now or when this script is run. And I'm going to create a variable that's a number that's called interval, which is actually the number of milliseconds in 24 hours. Now, I want to use 24 business hours. So what I need to do is I actually need to create another date, which is the date now plus all of those milliseconds. So I'm going to call it expire date. And I'm going to add using those business hours and using a function called business hours .add, I'm going to add to now date that interval that I created. So this will set expire date. It'll automatically calculate the deadline. And then we're just going to add that interval to the now date to create that deadline. So the only thing that's left to do is to actually assign that expire date to one of the fields on my record. So I'll say new lead dot prompt contact by double underscore C is equal to expire date. And that's it. We've set the field value. Now, the only thing we need to remember is we don't need to run any DML operations. We don't need to say insert record. We don't need to say update record, anything like that, because automatically it's going to do that. We're just making some changes to the record before it actually gets inserted. All right, so that's all. Uh, we built a trigger, we tested it. Uh, it was pretty easy and it's definitely something you can do even if you're not a very technical person, you're just an administrator. Um, this is something you can do and you can get a lot of mileage out of triggers. But at the same time, I wanna stress that it is always important to think about whether or not you actually need a trigger, whether you could you know, accomplish whatever it is you're trying to do with a validation rule or a workflow rule or the process builder, whatever it may be. So keep that in mind when you're making your triggers. Uh, go out and try this and enjoy. Thanks for watching.